Hola, and welcome back to another session of character modeling with me, Steve Moore, aka S'more. Now, today we're going to take a look at making a shirt collar. In the previous episode, when we made the torso and sleeves, I went into detail regarding the various tools we are using in Marvelous Designer. This episode, I will assume you're familiar with those and just plow on through. But if you need to review, a link to that episode is in the description below. If you'd like a copy of the Marvelous Designer file featured in this video, a link for that is also included in the description. The download includes a version of the mail model in both ZBrush and OBJ formats. And finally, please help me out by liking and subscribing. And on with the show. Let's examine a real shirt to see how these things are put together. Here's the neckband. Note how it stitches into the neck of the torso patterns and the actual collar attaches to the neckband. This creates that distinctive zigzag of a classic shirt collar. Now we understand how the collar is put together, we're ready to make our own. To begin the collar, the first thing we need to do is refine the neck opening for the collar. Now referring to my pattern reference, I add a couple more points to the front patterns which I will convert to a smooth curve a little later. Now, before we can create our neck band, we still need to add some strips, which will define the overlap for the buttons and buttonholes on the front patterns. I begin by measuring the width of the button strip on a real shirt and make a, a new piece, setting it to match the height of the front patterns and the width that I just got from the real shirt. This strip is really just a guide. To make the actual area for the buttons, I insert some points into the front pattern and pull out the extra strip I need. To complete the front patterns, I copy the right side and mirror paste to create the left. By the way, when I talk about left and right, I am speaking relative to the character. So if you were in the position of the character, it's the character's right side. Now, later on, we're going to create some working buttons, but for now, we just want to temporarily stitch the front patterns together. So we'll create some internal lines down the center of the front strips where the buttons will go and use these to stitch the front patterns together for now. To begin, choose the Create Internal Polygon Line tool, which can be found here. Click where you want the line to begin and double click to end the line. We want these lines running down the center of the button strips. Later, we will use these lines to add buttons. Now, before running the sim, be sure to set the layer of the left pattern one above the right pattern so that the left side sims on top of the right. Now, stitch those internal lines together and run the sim. To get the width of the neckband, I added up the various segments that form the neck opening. Next, we create the strip of the neckband using the Create Rectangle tool and set its width to the dimensions of the neck opening. Now, all we have to do is use the Split Line tool to subdivide the bottom line into segments to match the segments of the neck opening. The first point is easy. It's simply a uniform split, and this point corresponds to the center point of the back pattern. From there, we work our way out using the split two lines option and setting the length of the resulting segment to match the corresponding segment of the neck opening. To save time, I split the top line in half using uniform split and delete the points of the left side. This allows me to mirror the left side using the unfold option. Before proceeding to stitch our neckband into the shirt, I freeze the other patterns. This keeps things simple when simming. Using the segment sewing tool, I start with the center segment of the back pattern and proceed sewing towards the button strips of the front patterns. Now 
It just occurred to me that I need to flip the neckband so it's facing the other way in the scene. I do this by right clicking on the neckband pattern in the 3D window and choosing Flip Horizontal. Finally, we'll turn on our trusty arrangement points and snap our new neckband to the back of the neck of the avatar. And now we're ready to sim. Ah, yeah, now it's starting to look like a collar. Examining our pattern reference, I see that there is a subtle curve to the top of the neckband. This is easy enough to create. We simply pull down the outermost points along the top of the band. To do this, I'm choosing Change Length option. This way, I can also set the precise width I want the neckband to be at these points. I also created an internal line segment to use as a temporary ruler so I can be precise about the height of the neckband at the center. Finally, we just have to select the center point, right click and convert to curve point. Perfect. One of the things that is distinctive about a shirt collar is that little zigzag shape that appears at the edges of the collar. This is created by the fact that the collar is a little narrower than the neckband. I've measured the distance the collar starts in from the neckband on my own shirt and found it to be 3.25 centimeters. So I use the split line tool again, going with the two lines option to split the top curve of the neckband so that the point starts 3.25 centimeters in from the edge of the neckband. The length of the center segment will be the width of our collar. We're on the home stretch now. Once again, we use the create rectangle to draw out a rectangular pattern and set its width to equal the center segment of the neckband, top and bottom. This is going to be our collar. Referring to our pattern, I see that the collar has quite the curve along the top edge. So I quickly do a uniform split on that edge. Based on measurements taken from the real collar, we set the lengths of the outer edges of the collar. This leaves us a V shape in the center, which we need to create that curve on the top edge. Technically, this will become the bottom curve when the collar is folded over, but let's not get too complicated. Next, we flip the collar horizontally, the same as we did with the neckband, and position it roughly at the back of the neck above the neckband. And finally, we, re we freeze the neckband to keep the simming simple. Now, Go to the properties of the neckband, set it to be one layer above the torso patterns, and go to the collar pattern and also set it to be one layer above the neckband. Finally, proceed to stitch the collar into the neckband. We stitch the bottom line of our collar into the top segment of the neckband. And now we're ready to run that sim. Now it does take a bit of tugging on the collar to coax it into position, but eventually we have a smashing new collar. The finishing touch is to select the center point of that V segment on the collar and convert to a nice curve. Voila! All right, that's it for this episode. In the next session, we'll add some working buttons. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time, ciao.